We are nearing pie season, and so I'm gonna make my favorite butter and lard pie crust recipe. You're gonna start with flour and then sugar. If you're going to be making a savory pie or quiche or galette, you can skip the sugar. And this is a little controversial because you typically bake with unsalted butter, but I use salted butter in my pie crust. It just means you don't have to add salt to the crust lard. If you want to make it um, vegetarian, you can use shortening. You could also use bacon grease, especially if you're doing savory because bacon grease tends to be a lot more savory. So just toss that all together really gently. The butter is cut into big tablespoon sized pieces and I'm just pressing the lard a little bit and tossing it gently. I have what is known in the food industry and baking industry is hot hands. I My fingers and hands and palms are always really hot and I tend to melt fat and doughs and crusts and things like that. So I work the dough very, very lightly, as light as possible. So I'm literally just pressing the tablespoons a little bit and they're kind of breaking, kind of staying apart and tossing everything together. I'm also doing this I have no rings or bracelets or watches on. I clean my hands really, really well. Make sure you take off all jewelry and have very, very clean hands when you're doing this. Okay, so that's how it looks. And now we're going to add ice water. And so I added a few tablespoons of ice water and now I'm still, I'm just tossing. You can see I'm just tossing with my hands there. And it's coming together just a little bit. The key to a really good pie crust, in my opinion, is finding the right balance between liquid and working it, <laughs> working it. Because if you add too much water and you don't mix it enough and properly hydrate the dough, it's gonna be really tough. And if you overwork it, it's gonna be tough. And you're gonna break down those pieces of fat and get a mealy crust and not a flaky crust. But you can see how it started to come together even more, like it's nice and shaggy. See how it's holding together? I know I'm gonna need to add more water, but I am just gonna keep working it just a little bit more. Okay, and now I have these big pieces, but they're still like this dry, shaggy stuff. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water. It's very lightly kind of in those dry areas and work it together. And see how it's coming together now? I'm just like rotating it. So I bring it to push it together, bring it together and rotate bring it together and rotate and see how it has come together so much more and it's almost done. So like all of this will hold together, but it's not hydrated enough. You can see all these cracks I mean it's not hydrated and we've got this left over so because I don't want to add too much water. I'm going to add just little drops with my fingers and work that into the dry parts like that. And now we're gonna bring it all together. Staying on my tiptoes because I'm too short for our counters. And now that it's all coming together, I can work it more like this, where I'm pressing, kind of folding it in on itself to get everything combined. Oh, it feels so good. Like when you get used to making pie crust, you will get used to the feel of it. And mine feels properly hydrated. It, it holds a poke. It's not bouncing back. It's got a couple cracks, but it's not like falling apart if I press it, it stays together. Now we're gonna finish it. So all of that came together into a nice pie crust. I'll show you what we do next. So we have our pie crust here that is properly mixed and hydrated, but now it needs to rest. So you don't wanna go and just start rolling out your pie crust because the gluten in the flour that you've just been working with all the tossing and mixing needs a chance to relax. And you can, at least 30 minutes, it needs to be in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. You can do a couple hours, overnight, a day. I, oops, I'll store it in the fridge for up to like three days. You can even freeze pie crust. If you wrap it really well and put it in a freezer safe bag, you can freeze it. So do you see, you see all those big bits of fat and it's butter and lard, and that's gonna make a flaky crust. But see how it's not, I can touch it and it doesn't stick to my hands. If it were sticking to my hands, 
that would mean that it was overhydrated. It was too wet. You'd want to add flour. And if I were touching it and it was crumbling, that would mean it was too dry. You need to add more water. So time to wrap this up so it can rest. And I'm going to be making my grandma's apple squares. So I'm actually going to pat this into a bit of a square shape so that it's easier to roll out later. And finally, a couple more drops of water along the surface. Flip it and a couple more drops of water just to make sure that it's going to be properly hydrated. And now we wrap it up. And I like to just kind of, when it's wrapped, give it a good flatten. And like I said, I'm making apple slices. So I'm gonna be putting them in a rectangular pan. So I wrapped it rectangular. But yeah, you can still see, you see all those pieces of fat? That is what we want. That is gonna give us a flaky, beautiful, gorgeous crust. All right. And there you have it, perfect butter and lard pie crust.